Beach, West Beach, Meg's Point, anywhere along the way. Out on Route 1, there's a little parking lot that you can access the Greenway Trail and uh, our, our bike path along the beach. So please spread out, find a parking spot that doesn't have as many crowds, stay away from people as you're hiking out here at the park. We're, we're keeping the parks open as long as we possibly can, but we really need to maintain social distance. Even if the park is open, social distance is important. If you're outside, especially if you're inside, keep your social distance going, okay? So again, the campground parking lot here at Hammonasset is closed, at least for the time being. Hopefully we will be opening it, opening it up as soon as this starts to uh, go the other direction. I wanna remind everybody out there too, wash your hands, sneeze into your elbow, cough into your elbow, um, wash your hands with warm soap and water, okay? These are common sense things that we need to keep going while this is going on, all right? And you should be washing your hands anyway. It's not really a thing that you shouldn't do ever. You should always be washing your hands. And I don't know if you guys notice, but behind me, our fish are being fed right now. There's a volunteer. So you might see some things going down and a fish being fed, which is really cool. Maybe we'll do a whole show about feeding the animals here at the Nature Center. Okay, so today our animal is, my favorite animal for, for the day anyway, is a green crab, all right? Now, you say green crab, you think, okay, it's gonna be green, right? So I have a couple of green crabs here. Here's the first one. And we keep them in these baskets so that it's easier to pick them up and handle them. All right, so let's take a look. We've got this one here is a male, and this one is a female. You can see the very wide tail covers the whole underbelly, and this one, it's quite narrow. It only covers the center of its belly, right? So this one is green completely. This one is orange. It's still called the green crab. This is actually called the red phase, even though most of the time they're orange. I guess they can be red sometimes, but we don't call things in science, we don't call it orange very often. And you can see right here, it's got a chunk of fish, and that's what it likes to eat. We feed them chunks of fish. They eat lots of other things as well. They can eat algae wafers or shrimp pellets, lots of different things. Okay. So, why is one green crab green and the other green crab orange, or the red face? It's because of their shedding cycle. As they shed, as they go through a cycle of shedding, the color changes, okay? So, this one is going to probably shed much later than this one. This one's closer to a shed. I believe it's orange is closer to shed, green is farther from shed but it's the shed cycle that leads to the differences in color. Now, there is a really nice trick for learning how to identify a green crab. And I love these little tricks. They make it easier to remember things. How many letters in the word green? We have five letters. So if you look here, there are five spikes. You can spell G-R-E-E-N. And now you know it's a green crab. So these spikes right here, if there are five spikes along the front of its shell, we know we have a green crab. There are other crabs have lots of different numbers of spikes. Some of them don't have any spikes at all. Now we've talked about sh uh, molting in the past with other animals, but the crab can molt its exoskeleton, this nice hard armor. When it molts its exoskeleton, it will be soft. And if it tried to pinch me, the claw would bend right around my finger because the whole body is soft. This crab has a nice hard exoskeleton, so if it were to pinch me right now, it would hurt a little bit. Some people actually do like to eat green crabs. There aren't a lot of people that eat them, but there are some people that eat green crabs. And they, hold on, let me turn it around. Okay, you can see, I'm gonna try and show you its mouth, how it gets its food. Okay, so people do eat it. They are eaten by large fish and lobsters and bigger things, 
but there's its mouth right there. Now, what they like to eat is anything that they can get their claws around. Lots of small shellfish, smaller crabs. They usually don't eat each other, but if there's another crab like an Asian shore crab, they're going to eat those also. Um, and if they get small flounder on the bottom, they'd like to get their claws on some of those as well. So anything that they can get that claw around, and it can open up pretty wide, so you can tell what this crab is able to eat by how big it can get its claw, okay? Green crabs are not from Connecticut. They are originally from Europe. So from uh, Norway, all the Scandinavian countries, all the way along the coast of Europe down to the coast of North Africa is their natural habitat. That's where they're naturally from. Now, they are found all around the world. We have them all up and down the east coast of the U.S., on the west coast of the U.S. They're in parts of Asia. They're in Australia. They have spread all around the world. And what they think happened, because the first time that they were found here in New England, the first record we have of them in New England was 1817. So it was a long time ago, and we think that they got into the ships in the 1800s and traveled around the world. So the 1800s and then like South Africa, I think their first one was the 19, 1900. Um, so they spread around the world on these ships. And that's how now you can find them all over the world. They're not widespread everywhere. They're not all along every coast. But here, they're along the coast all the way from Canada all the way down to the Carolinas. You can find them. It's one of the most common crabs on our rocky shore. They like marshy areas and rocky shores, places where they can take cover and hide. Now, these crabs were, were forced out when the Asian shore crabs arrived here. The Asian shore crabs are more numerous. They reproduce faster, so you get a lot more of them. And they sort of forced out the green crab. So we don't find the green crab as much as we used to, okay? Now, I see someone is asking, is the skin hard when they shed? When they shed this exoskeleton, so I actually have, this is one of the crabs that's in this tank shed last week, all right? This is just the exoskeleton, no crab. The crab is in here somewhere. Um, but it sheds this exoskeleton. The skin then is soft and it can actually pump up its body. It will pump fluid water into its extremities and get a little bit larger. Once it's a little bit larger, then it will just wait for the skin to, ha to harden up. The skin will be very soft and it will gradually harden. That's one of the reasons that what they like to eat are parts of its exoskeleton. This crab didn't eat any of its exoskeleton. It ate another crab's exoskeleton. Uh, because we find partial exoskeletons a lot of time. This one we found intact, so we took it out to show you. But it will eat the exoskeleton. That puts more calcium into its system. And when calcium hardens, that's what makes your bones nice and hard. It hardens up the nice exoskeleton. Okay? We think of the exoskeleton like Iron Man's armor. Now, if you missed one of our past videos, so I did a video on another crab, the Asian shore crab, you can go to megspointnaturecenter.org, go to our virtual learning center, and you'll get to see that video and all the videos that we've done. So go back and learn more about how crabs molt with our other video about the Asian shore crab. You can watch them all, they're all lots of fun. I'm having fun doing them. I hope you're all having fun. I like to see your comments and questions, so keep them going. Uh, someone's asking, do you know how big they can get? This crab doesn't get much larger than this, just about three inches across and two inches this way. That's gonna be as big as a green crab gets. I see lots of hearts and thumbs up when I hold the crab up, so I think everybody likes to see the crab. I'm going to show you the crab more, okay? Um, but yes, you can, you can go on. Make sure you put up on there where you're from. Uh, and if you have any questions, keep those questions coming. We will try and look at the videos, look at the questions 
uh, that you put up after the video is over. You can still ask questions and we'll try and answer as many of them as we can. Sometimes we get lots of video of lots of questions, so it might be hard. We might miss one or two, but we're really trying to answer as many of your questions as we can. So let me remind everyone again that the campground parking lot here at, at Hammond Asset is closed. That is to spread people out so that you are able to keep your social distance. That's the big word of the day is social distancing. We want to keep you all over the place. Okay. Question, does he have an injury? I don't think that this crab does have an injury. It has all eight legs both claws, it has both of its eyes and its antenna. And remember, they can regenerate a lost limb on a, every time they molt or shed their exoskeleton. There's a possible, they, they will grow a little bit more. Uh, with a claw, it could take a couple of sheds. Usually they get a leg in one shed. It's really impressive to see that. But no, this one doesn't look injured. I think the other one was missing a leg. But again, it will grow back. Okay. Is that the safest way to hold a crab? I love the question. Safest way to hold a crab is definitely by the sides. A lot of people like to hold it like this, but look where my thumb is. It could reach down and grab my thumb. It doesn't do it very often, but every once in a while it will reach down. There it goes. See if it knows I'm there, it may do it. Um, so yeah, the safest way is holding it by the sides. Uh, claws can't really get you. Now, when I was a kid, I used to love catching crabs. There's a really nice beach over in New London, and I remember going there with my mom and my grandmother. Our whole family was there, and I was catching green crabs. And I would run over, and I would stick my finger in. I'd let it pinch my finger. It hurt, but not that bad. And then I would run up on shore and drop it into a hole that I had dug. And once it got into the water in the hole, it would let go. Well, what do you think happened? My mother says, that's a really bad idea. You probably shouldn't let it pinch you. And I had let a few pinch me. It didn't really hurt. So I kept doing it. I didn't listen to my mother. Bad idea. And I found a different kind of crab. Didn't realize that it would feel different. I found a blue crab. Stuck my finger right down there so the blue crab could pinch it. It didn't really pinch it. It stuck its claw right through my finger. There was a little bit of blood. Of course, I was crying a little bit. And my mom said, should have listened to your mother. Uh, so you should listen to your mother. Uh, that's not the best way to catch a crab is letting it pinch you. Again, it doesn't hurt a lot for the smaller crabs, but you get a big one like this, it'll pinch. It'll, it'll hurt a little bit and you, you don't want that to happen. And if you misidentify a crab, you're gonna end up with a blue crab. It's gonna hurt a lot more than this one, okay? All right, do we have any other questions? Somebody's replying to a question about they shed as they grow bigger. Yes, they do. In order to get larger, uh, they do need to shed. Um, they are not shedding to heal injuries, although that's part of it. They're really shedding when it's time to get larger. Uh, a few other things about them. They will have 100,000 eggs. The female, so let's take a look at the female, will keep the eggs in this little pouch under her tail. And when the eggs hatch, after she has her eggs and they start to grow, she's going to go to deeper water. She's going to go to a place where the water temperature isn't going to change too much. So she wants to get a little deeper water. Those eggs are going to grow larger and larger. And then when they hatch, for about two weeks, they're going to be plankton, which means you see them with a microscope. They're going to be swimming around in the water. They're called zooplankton because it's an animal. Phytoplankton is a plant, microscopic plant, phytoplankton, microscopic animal, zooplankton. So for about two weeks, they're planktonic. They're swimming around in the water. Then they start to settle down as they molt. They shed a lot when they're little. They molt, then they start to become benthic, which means they live on the bottom. So they start out swimming around in the water. They become benthic. They live on, they start to molt and change their shape. So when they're planktonic, they look more like a shrimp. Then they start to look more like a crab when they start to live on the bottom. 
and that's where they're going to live the rest of their lives is on the bottom. We do actually have some crabs that um, can swim, and we'll be talking about one of those if I can get one uh, while I'm doing these videos. I don't have a blue crab right now, but a blue crab can swim, which is really, really cool. Okay, um, somebody's asking, are those shrimp in the background? And I'm not sure if you're talking about the tank over there. Um, there are some shrimp, you can't see it in the tank, but the tank that you can't see right now, there are some shrimp in that tank. So we did talk about uh, the fact that there are some people that like to eat them. The lobster who is cruising around over there, I'll see if he comes into the picture here. Uh, he will eat them. A big flounder might be able to eat them. Sea robin like to eat them. So there are lots of things that will eat the crabs when they're small. The smaller they are, the more things are going to eat them. And obviously the larger they are, then they start to eat more of other types of food. Uh, they live about six years, so they're not a very long-lived. They're long-lived for crabs, but for other animals, it's, it's not uh, very long-lived. All right, let's see. Do we have any other questions? All right. So I want to remind everyone again, you can go and see all of these videos on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Go to the Virtual Learning Center. Take a look at that. There's the crab, the lobster, the big lobster is coming over. If you guys watched the lobster video, he didn't want to stick around. Now he's coming to me. So go figure. He's a wild animal. You got to go with it. Uh, but go to the Virtual Learning Center. You can upload images. So I would really like to see your idea of what a green crab looks like or what it should look like because these aren't really, really green. This afternoon, 2 o'clock, we're going to be going to the habitat where you find green crabs. So we will be on the rocky shore and we're going to talk about, some, about the environment where you can find these crabs. So from now on, as long as we're doing the, these videos, the 11 o'clock show is going to be a live animal and the 2 o'clock show will be the environment, something to do with the environment, either out in the park, hopefully we'll do lots of them out in the park, uh, but we can talk about other environmental things in the Nature Center as well. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Make sure you keep up with this. Like us, follow us, tell your friends about it. The more people we have, the more fun we're having. So, thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you this afternoon at 2 o'clock.